Hello, I am the Red Monk, and uh, to start this video off, I want to talk about this sick new base I just got. It's pretty freaking sweet, and I think it's got to be one of the most expensive bases out there. You know, I had a blue one that was pretty much the same exact uh, Amazon cheap base model, but uh, it kicked the bucket, so we have our number two. Now, I'm going to replace the pickups on it because they are completely ghetto. But the guitar itself it sounds pretty good. It sounds pretty good. And uh, today's video, we're going to talk about these uh, constants of the universe, right? These, these ratios that I like. They see everywhere. You know, these sort of... Uh, I'm sure you know some of them. I'll go through some examples because I think the, the best way to understand them are examples. But they're like, some of them are like mathematical numbers. Like pi, you know, is a universal constant in the universe, right? And it appears in a lot of places and it's almost eerie. And it feels like a like a cheat code to the universe. It's like the the fabric of the matrix has like a twitch to it. You kind of see it. And I think one of the most common ones we know about is the Gordon Ratio, right? And that sort of like one to two connection where like you see a chart and it goes like this, you know? Like all, all fucking charts in existence that aren't like, it, like all fucking charts are either like linear or it's like that Gordon Ratio. There's the, like these Portuguese death carvings that, it also sort of represents a constant of just this like endless cycle. You know what I mean? Where it's just like the end is the beginning and we're just like trapped in this fucking loop that just goes over and over again. Like these constants. You know what I mean? Like you just see it in the fabric of existence. <laughs> uh, you know, like, like how you can like make something more complex by simpling it so the aspects are better defined. Uh, the whole thing of how fucking important like momentum is you know what I mean like how shit rolls downhill and like how everything has this like snowball effect to it how like the big only get bigger there's these uh like these constants and you think if you could like somehow like fabricate these like cheat codes of the matrix into your songs you could create like mega songs and I kind of want to talk about that today and sort of be realistic about it like you could sound so fucking cool if you're like huh i know about the the gordon ratio and how it relates to everything in the universe but i want to sort of realistically talk about it and they aren't really that great i mean they're cool to think about i think the main thing they get is a feeling and there's a few like little uh gimmicks that you could use that make your song sound better but like really they aren't as they are very universal, but they do not hold much ground. And they don't really create a magic cheat code to the universe. So I'm going to go through probably one of the foundations of music. This is probably one of the major like cheat codes to music. The Portuguese death carvings are an excellent example of this like endless fucking cycle. And there's these, uh, like, these cavemen uh, scribblings. And they would always begin and end with the same image, right? It's like this endless fucking loop of life. How it's just so the same shit over and over again. And that, that like repetition and patterns are such a core part of music. That's like part of the whole thing of music is just that repetition. And all, you know, music, all it is is just a thing that is to be enjoyed, right? It doesn't really, it serves the purpose of making a mental effect so all it is is just uh you know a collection of patterns you know our brains like patterns like that you know repetition and i mean if you really really think about it the perfect pattern would just be this one note being held for a long time right and if you think about it you know the either off or on or the one or two is just a deviation that you bring back to the ones 
that you get, bring back to the zero, right? All the pattern you just you just catch the you just play one note and hold it, but you screw with that, and the whole uh, tension and release is how it returns to that ground state, that uh, drone note. And I'm gonna go through a few riffs that kind of have that like feeling to them. So I'll sort of show this repetition. And what we're going to do is we're just going to, you know, play a pattern and then we're going to deviate from it and return it, right? It's all about just overcomplicating zero. See what I mean? There's the, there's a, there's that whole riff here, and then instead of going at one part, we go like, uh, we do that little like down part, and we're sort of you know cashing on that like that pattern, that cycle, that repetition, and as you can see, all it really does is just you know add a nice little hint, and if you like try to force the patterns into like if you just play the golden ratio like whole note half note half note whatever you try to like create that golden ratio it won't work out too well just because it'll sound kind of overproduced and i mean like it works the way we've had it for a reason right and you your brain does this like uh make a song for human kind of thing by itself and if you just focus on that, don't try to, you know, make the Gordon ratio. You won't uncover a cheat code to the universe. But being aware of how these patterns work uh, can help you. One of the best ways you can have a good song be made is by replicating a song that is already good. A song that has already been enjoyed by yourself. Because all these... uh universal constants all these fabrics of the universe are all in our brains and if you just write from your head onto the sheet in a very natural way you know it won't be over complicated it won't be uh overproduced right and with these patterns all it is is just needless complexity like you know, when you, like, eat food that, like, has a purpose, right? But with music, its purpose is only to affect the mind. And the mind is a little bit tricky. And all it is is just a creation. It's a pattern, right? It doesn't have to fill a quota. So all you're doing is just playing the one note, being held forever with a ton of needless complexity. And returning to that zero is a release to that tension. That the complexity is the tension, and the release is the returning to zero, you know, the ground state. And, uh, conclude. So, uh, another great constant I want to talk about for our conclusion is uh, this thing I think I talked about in a video a few months ago. It's called, uh, like, Wabi Sabi or something. Some weeb trash fucking word. And it is about uh, having something created in its perfect state, right? I, it's not about making something perfectly produced, right? You don't want to overproduce something. If it comes out overproduced, it sounds very natural, right? If you try to force these patterns into your song, it won't work out too well. So if you just replicate something that sounds good, and make it in its like purest form possible, it'll be really good. If you just take out all the needless complexity and just have the the zero, the ground state, and how you deviate from it, and how you deviate is your message, and you just return, you'll make a good song. And it is not a whole magical thing, right? Just how it's been done in your head. These uh, constants don't flip the table. They've always been there, and knowing them, they're just 
yeah, they're everywhere, but they're so fine everywhere. It just makes you, you know, better noticing things. It makes you a little bit of a wise crack and smart. But that's really all I can say about the socket topic. So yes, uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. I hope you too can be a. Uh... <laughs>